Hi, welcome to episode 55 Photoshop Lightroom TV. It's been more than a year since Photoshop, Light since Photoshop Lightroom TV started. So we've had 54 episodes so far. Uh, I'm Mark Mularczyk, your host from SciTrain.co.uk and welcome to another week and another episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. Thank you for stopping by, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. If you want to have more information, more tips, tricks, techniques, more videos, visit my blog photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk Also visit me on Facebook and, and Twitter. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's M-A-R-E-R-1-3, Mario13. If, or just type in my name, Marek Mularczyk. If you're looking for me on say, Facebook, this would be Marek Mularczyk SAI Training, SAI S-A-I. And you can find lots of tips, tricks, techniques, links, and all this kind of stuff. Anything Photoshop, Lightroom, Bridge, and it will be related. Now, let me start with the first video this week. And the first video will be in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how you can use Photoshop to soften the skin on portraits. This will be just one of the techniques, one of many techniques that we use in Photoshop. I'll show you a quick and easy technique to soften the skin on a portrait in Photoshop. Okay, here I am inside Adobe Photoshop and in this video I'm going to show you how to soften the skin, how to smooth the skin. Just a quick technique. So I'm working on this image here. I'm going to soften her skin on her face. First, I'm going to duplicate the background layer. I'm just going to drag it on a new layer icon. Or you could also use the Ctrl J, Command J keyboard shortcut. I'm going to rename this layer. So I'll type in soften skin. Now I'm going I'm just going to zoom in just a bit. Now I'm going to blur her skin. So I'm going to use filter, blur, Gaussian blur to soften the skin. Now everything goes uh, blurry soft, that's fine. What I'm going what I'm focusing on is the actual skin. So I'm not worried about the eyes and the hair. So I'm just focusing on the skin. I want it to be nice and soft. I'm going to exaggerate it just a bit so it's easier for you to see on the video. Okay, let's see. That's before, that's after, maybe just a touch more. That looks fine. Okay, just so you can see. That's before, that's after. Now I'll just press OK. Next, I'm going to give this layer a layer mask. So I'll just click on the layer mask icon here. To give it a layer mask. By default, layer mask is white, so it's showing everything, which means I'm looking at the soft uh, layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pan this layer mask. So I'll first select the layer mask, then I'll zoom in. And I'll be painting on the areas that I want to be in focus. So, for example, on the eyes. So I'll just select the brush tool. I'll make my foreground color black. And I'll just start painting on the eyes to bring back the focus. You can see on the layer mask the black on here. Okay, the same here. see here on her eyebrows. I'll do the same on the lips. <coughs> you can see it here. The lips are getting sharper, more in focus. The point of this technique is that you blur the entire image and then you paint on the layer mask to reveal the content that you want to be in focus like lips, eyes, hair as well so I'll take my brush bigger I just paint on the hair okay, to bring more, to bring the focus back I 
it's, it's a quite subtle effect and that's what you should be in the retouching techniques they should be subtle okay and that's before and that's after you can see how the skin changes it's just a quick technique on how to soften the skin in portraits Welcome back, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial in Photoshop. Just before we jump into the next tutorial, I've got some news for you. If you've been following my blog, photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk, you know that Adobe announced a new, a new program. It's called Adobe Muse, and it's a tool where, for designers to create HTML content, to create HTML websites in using an application that's very similar to InDesign. No coding required, everything done visually, which reminds me a bit of Flash Catalyst. Well, Flash Catalyst is another tool for designers, but it's creating Flash content. Now we have Muse that creates HTML content, and it supports HTML5, CSS3, all the and all the web standards as well. To find out more, go to my blog, photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk and you'll find a post about Adobe Muse. Now, let's jump into another tutorial. This one will be in Bridge. I'm going to show you how you can edit JPEGs in Adobe Bridge. Something that most people don't know. They usually, when they think about... Well, not in just Adobe Bridge, I'm sorry. I'll show you how to edit JPEGs in Camera Raw. Now, usually when people think about camera raw, when they hear the word raw, they think about raw images. But what they don't realize is that you can also edit JPEG images in camera raw. And TIFF as well. And because camera raw comes with Photoshop, but also with Bridge and with other applications, then you can use it within Adobe Bridge, even if you don't have Photoshop. So let's jump into camera raw and let's see how you can edit JPEGs. Did you know that you could use Adobe Camera Raw to edit JPEGs and not just RAW images? That's what people usually think. They usually think that Camera Raw is for RAW images only. Also, what many people don't realize is that you can use Camera Raw in Bridge, not just in Photoshop. So even if you don't have Photoshop, if you have, let's say, just Illustrator, or just Flash, or Premiere, you have Bridge, so you can use it as well. I've got a JPEG image here, okay, and here's what happens. If you just double-click on the file, it's going to open in Photoshop. That's the default behavior. But what you can do is you can right-click on it and just open in Camera Raw, and this will open it in Adobe Camera Raw. And this is a JPEG, farmersmarket.jpg. So I'm opening JPEG image in Camera Raw. I'm just going to zoom out a bit to 100% view. This is the actual image, and I'm going to make some adjustments. Of course, when you edit JPEG images in RAW, you are somehow limited. For example, you can't really change the white balance, because JPEG has the white balance embedded within the file already, so there's nothing you can do in here. This is one of the reasons why uh, using RAW gives you so much more flexibility, so many more options, and no limits, really. But you can make quite a few changes in here. You can still play with the temperature, but notice another thing you don't see the temperature in kelvins like you do in RAW. You just see numbers like zero and so on, even though you can manipulate the image here in camera RAW. Okay. Quick tip for you, if you've moved the slider and you want to move it back to the original setting, just double click on it. Okay. It also works in Lightroom, the same uh, keyboard, no it's not a keyboard, but the same tip trick. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the con exposure just a bit. Then I'll increase the blacks. Make the image crispier and more contrasting. Now I'll bring some light in the shadows by moving the fill light slider just a bit. Not too much, just a bit more light in here. I'll increase the clarity, definitely. and maybe vibrance just a bit. Okay, now this is the, the basic tile. What else can we do here? Well, let's say you want to turn the image to black and white. Okay, so go to HSL, um, this one here, and we convert it to grayscale. 
Now the image is black and white, but we can use the sliders to increase the saturation of the blacks within the image. If I just deselect it for a moment, so I can see what colors we have here. Okay, we've got the reds, yellows, blue. Or oh, let's let's play with the sky. Could be blues or aquas. Mm. Yeah, this is changing the sky. So we can make it totally white or darker. So this is aquas. This looks better. Uh, what about the reds? That's uh, nice. The stand, very, very nice. Okay, one of the new powers in CS5 we have the effects with the grain where you can simulate film grain. Okay, and we got this lens correction here. We can enable lens profile collection. Unfortunately, I didn't find the matching lens, and I'm not sure what lens was used because this is the image I received from Adobe. So I'm just going to leave it for right here, and when I'm done, I could either save the image, or I can click done, and Bridge will remember the changes I've made to the image, and here is this icon. Okay. So if I don't like it, and I want to bring it back to the original, I can right-click on it, then choose Develop Settings, and Clear Settings. And this goes back to Color. So that's how you edit JPEG images in Camera Raw in Adobe Bridge. Welcome back. I'm Mark Mulacic once again. I hope you enjoyed these two tutorials. Let me know what you think. Post a comment on, on blog Photoshop Lightroom Bridge.co.uk or join me on Facebook and Twitter and let me know what you think. If there's anything you would want me to create for you, a tutorial, a tip, a technique, let me know and I'll be happy to do it. Also, one more thing, I, ha I recently had a video on, on my blog, photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk, also on my YouTube channel, when I did a review of Dell XPS and I talked about HP Envy as well, laptops. I've got a second part, so go to photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk and check the second video as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. This was Photoshop Lightroom Brit No, this was Photoshop Lightroom TV <laughs> Episode 55. I'm Mark Mulagic from SciTrain.co.uk, one of the UK's leading specialists in Adobe certified training. And I hope to see you next week on next episode, episode 56, in here. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.